Okay, now in this next example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss how we analyze genetic data in the case of gene, three genes that are actually linked to one another. So, uh, first I'm going to outline an example, I'm going to provide a little bit of insight into it, and then we're going to follow through with the analysis. Okay, so I'm going to tell you in Drosophila melanogaster the mutations quick, runt, and blotch. We'll just call them Q, R, and B. Quick, runt, and blotch are recessive alleles on the X chromosome. And then so Q, big Q, big R, and big B would indicate the uh, dominant wild type alleles. And so in the particular cross scheme, what was done is uh, an individual female was crossed to uh, males. Now it's on the X chromosome, so it, uh, if you analyze the progeny in male, uh, if you analyze the phenotypes in the male progeny, since they inherit the Y from their dad, it doesn't really matter what the genotype of the dad is. So, uh, crossed by a male, okay, which is X, you know, Y, of course, okay, and so if you look in male progeny, you instantly reveal the, uh, the genotypes of the gametes that have been inherited and transmitted uh, from the mother. Okay, so let's suppose these are the data, so Q, R, B, okay, this is the uh, phenotype of each locus, so we'll do the same kind of thing that we did before, um, a little bit differently, so Q, 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 and then little Q, little Q, little Q, little Q, and then I, in this particular case I did big R, little R, big R, little R, big R, little R, big R, little R, and then we'll do it like this. big B, big B, little B, little B, big B, big B, little B, little B. Okay, so um, these are the uh, eight different possible um, uh, gametes that can be transmitted from this female and uh, instantly revealed in the male progeny independent because the male will pass his Y to his sons and then you can see what the phenotype of those sons then uh, have. Okay, so the data for the total number of offspring, okay, we're going to say there's a thousand offspring uh, and the total number is equal to and then it's like 2 and 25 and 430, and um, 50, and 45, and 425, and 20, and 3. Now, notice something. This is a little bit different than the example I just gave, because in the example I just gave, there are four that are all of the order of 250. But here you can see that there's one really common one. This one, and another really common one. Okay. Now let's think about what's going on here for a second. Actually, I'm going to break it out for you. Now let's imagine that you have the chromosome from the mom, and we're just going to indicate not all the sister chromatids, just the two sister chromatids that matter. Now um, let's imagine that you just arbitrarily are of this particular um, a, a, a genotype BQ, big R, little b, okay, and then little q, uh, little r, big b. All right. Now there's a couple things. Now if they're linked, right, there's a couple parameters that need to be figured out, right? The genetic distance between this one, the genetic, genetic distance between this one. But notice we've done something. We've actually kind of assumed that r is actually in the middle. Now we don't actually know that, okay? Um, we don't know that at all, as a matter of fact, because it could actually be <laughs> Let's be clear, it could be the other way around, right? You could have it something like this. So um, the little b here could be in the middle, okay? And then the uh, big b here could be in this one right here. And then this would be little q, little, okay, so little r, and then big r here. Okay, so it could be like that, right? So how do we know? Okay, well, it turns out there's a special trick, which I call the odd man out trick. But first, let's just say, what this does tell us. We don't know the order here, but what we do know is something very, very important. We do know because these are the most common, we know that the genotype of the parental chromosomes is given here, but we don't know what the order is. Okay? Now, let's talk about the other classes of numbers here. Okay? Well, what you can kind of see here is that there's sort of a modest class, and then the modest class, and this is like a really rare class here, right? Now it turns out the rare class arises from something that doesn't happen very often. Okay? 
And what that is is actually a double crossover event. Okay? So you can imagine that if, for example, if this were in fact the correct order, and this were the, uh, uh, and this is the correct order, and this is also the genotypes of the, and we, they actually have already told you that we know that these are the printables because uh, big Q, little b, and big R are one kind, okay? And little q, little r, and big B is the other kind. We know that that's the printable. Now, if this happens to be the order, what would the, um, Double or crossovers, how would they be positioned? Well, a crossover would be here and a crossover would be here. Now think about that. What would the, the potential genotypes that an individual that has this type of double crossover for their gametes? Well, you just kind of move along here, move along there, and move along there. And then, so they, in fact, for the doubles, in this particular scenario, okay, the genotypes of the double crossover uh, gametes would be big Q, big B, and big R, and the little Q, little B, and little R. So this is the uh, reciprocal of that. Okay. So let's think about that for a second. Well, in fact, we know then that these have to be the doubles because that's the rare class. Okay. So with respect to what we know are the parentals, okay, this is important. With respect to know with parentals. We can infer the one in the middle by finding which one is the odd man out. And so for a second, what we can do is we can actually go and look and find the odd man out here by comparing to this. So let's look at this one here. Big Q, big R, little b. Okay. Now let's compare it to the either this double or this double. Okay. Well, in this particular double, big Q, big R, little b compared to big Q, big R, big b, B seems to be the outlier there, and that's actually true, right? So B is the odd man out, but you may also kind of compare it to this one, this one here, uh, big Q, big R, little b here. Little b is the same as this one, but Q and R are separate from this one. So the one that's the outlier here, they're different, and it's the same. Here, these are the same, but B is different. That tells us that B is in the middle. Now let's actually find what's reciprocal to this parental one. Uh, little q, little r, big b, okay, now little q, little r, little b, okay, so again here the b is the odd man out, so we're going to say the odd man out is in this one compared to that, and in this one, so it turns out in fact that b is in the middle, okay, now once we can set it up like this, as I've already actually done for you, we can then ask the next question, what is the genetic distance between q and b, Okay, and what is the genetic distance between B and R? Okay, and um, I'll sort of go through that right now. What you need to do then is you need to go through these data and look at the genetic. So for Q and B, you're going to ignore R, and you're just going to think about, well, which ones show recombination between Q and B? Well, we know that the parentals have the uh, big Q, little b relationship. So anything that's like this, big Q little b, or little Q big b, those are the parentals, okay? Now the recombinants then by definition then would be, would be uh, little Q little b, and then big Q big b, okay? So let's count those up. So which ones are those? Okay, so here, right here is a um, big Q big b, okay? So let's actually call that one one of the recombinants, okay? So there's the big Q, big B, there's a 25 there. Okay, and let's find another big Q, big B. Are there any other ones? Um, right, that right here, right? Okay, uh, excuse me, right here, right? Now notice something here. This is actually the double one. This is the rare one. So there's the two there, okay? And now what about the little Q and little Bs? Okay, well, there's a sort of a common one here. There's this little Q, little B, which is 20. Okay, plus now the uh, little Q, little B, because where the crossover occurs uh, in the double, and there's a 3 there. Okay, so in this particular case, there's 27, 25, and 27. And I can just tell you right now that... Um, uh, maybe I made a mistake somewhere. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, 20 and 3, and then 25 plus 2. Uh, 
Yeah, this is where I'm being silly. Yeah. 20 plus 3 happens to be 23, not 25. Okay, anyway, oh, that's interesting. So that adds up to 50. Now you can go through and you can find all of the other ones from here, but we know that there's a thousand progeny, so this is actually going to be, of course, equal to 950. And so if you do the math, um, you would say that uh, the recombinant class, which is this class, the recombinant class is, and I'll erase this little diagram up here, okay, 50 out of the total 1,000, okay, which is a frequency of 0 0.05. So what we would say is that the distance between Q and B is equal to 5 centimorgans, okay. Now then you can also do the distance between B and R in the same way, and it turns out that that's equal to 10 centimorgans. And you can do the math for that yourself to double check, okay. And in this particular case, that is how you determine the genetic distance between two things. And to keep yourself happy, you might want to get rid of this and put a little b uh, and b here, and then r and r here, okay? And then designate what the proper linkage relationships of those things are in your final answer.